So, my question to you is, are you ready to rock and roll? First, let's talk about rock stars, okay? Because rock stars are the core of what we're going to talk about today. Now, I'm not a rock star, except for maybe when I'm singing in the shower. La, la, la. Or when I'm driving in my car with the stereo blaring. Boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 ba. And I imagine that most of you here in the room do not consider yourself rock stars. Would that be true? However, there is something that we can learn from rock stars. So let me ask you this. What do rock stars have in common? Talent, fame, passion, not shy, yes. They have charisma, creative, they dress well, they have money. But you know what else they have? They have low maintenance, ever adoring fans. And this is what we're going to focus on today. How to build your business or your organization's fan club while making money in the process. It's not a big secret. It comes down to a few simple but important principles. And these principles I learned during 10 amazing years in the music business. Now, for those of you that haven't been completely isolated from internet, TV, and radio gossip, you will know that Sarah McLaughlin is one of Canada's top singer-songwriters and an international superstar. In the early 90s, she was virtually unknown. And it was myself that led a team of people to get her to Canadian North American celebrity status. She achieved not one time platinum, not two times platinum, but three times platinum, which is equivalent to a business going from zero to five million dollars in less than a year. Not too bad. Green Day were around for a very long time as an indie grunge band before they hit the mainstream. But people are like, wow, they just became so successful so quickly. It's not true. And it's not true for most artists in the music business, and it's not true for most businesses. We need to look to the fans, and we need to build relationships with those fans, even if it's one fan at a time. What constitutes a number one fan from a music business perspective? And there's nine different things. Number one love the artist's music. And number nine, they will stand in line for hours at an in-store event just to get an autograph. Imagine if your customers were that enthusiastic. Renovation therapy. <laughs> you may not be a Britney Spears fan, but you're just gonna pretend for a couple minutes and then it will be over, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Nosebleed seats. Does anybody know what nosebleed seats are? Yeah, in the bleachers, right? Way up there for 37 bucks and completely clear up your sinuses. And this is also true. You could pay $3,500 and get official platinum seating. It's a personally autographed Britney Spears gift. Maybe a travel mug. <laughs> now, somebody paid for that. Somebody bought that. Give your fans what they want. But we had one problem. The band wasn't together anymore. So what do we do? We do what all record companies do. We go into the vaults and we dig out all the old stuff and we remix and we remaster it and we create a product called Skinny Puppy Back and Forth Series Number One. And when we tell people there's Back and Forth Series Number One, what are we telling those fans? That there's more. There's gonna be a number two. So my question to you is with your number one fans, what exclusive treatments are you giving them? Because if you're not, you can bet your competition will.